So I get a lot of comments over things not working in Linux. Mm -hmm. And some people actually destroy or wipe out their whole system and reload an entire other version of whatever Linux. It might be Ubuntu, it might be Pop! OS, whatever it might be, just because one device doesn't work. It could be a sound card, it could be a Wi-Fi driver. You get the idea. And if you're watching this video, good chance something's not working for you. So let's solve that without wiping out your whole system because I think that's just ridiculous. Uh, it's a, such a simple fix, but one that we need to go over because there's a lot of other benefits we can get out of this, such as faster gaming, just overall better performance uh, for desktop usage because after all, Linuxes were built with servers in mind not so much desktop users. So we can uh, do some tweaks to improve that even more uh, and uh, not only get better graphics card drivers and also drivers for all those other things, Wi-Fi drivers, sound card drivers, all that, uh, but also get better performance. So let's get into upgrading our Linux kernel. I do live stream every Monday and Friday, so if you have a question for me, be sure and stop into my Twitch channel and ask me live. And if you'd like to check out these streams after the fact, you can always head over to Chris Titus Tech Streams and check out my entire archive over there. Now, normally when it comes to the Linux kernel, there's a package out there called UKUU. It has a nice graphic user interface and um, they started charging for it, and I'm just like, eh, I never really liked it that much to begin with, and now that they're actually charging money for it, it's just not something I can ever recommend anymore. So we got a couple different things here. Uh, if you're an Ubuntu user or you use an Ubuntu derivative, such as regular Linux Mint, not the Debian edition, just regular Linux Mint, or Pop! OS, you can use this project right here. I'll put a link in the description below, and that is the Ubuntu mainline kernel.sh product. Uh, basically, it's very easy to install. It gives you all the instructions here. Again, this is for like Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Pop! OS, KDE Neon, and Elementary OS, and uh, you know, all those, they're basically, basically based around Ubuntu. In the install script here, this is really all you're doing. So you need to do an apt install wget, which is one line, very easy. Chances are you already have wget, so you could probably actually skip that. Uh, and then you actually grab this script, which is right here, completely open source, review it if you like, and then do an executable mod to it, chmod ubuntu mainline kernel, and then go sudo move this to the actual system local bin folder, so then you can run it anywhere on your system. Over in our terminal, we'll just, uh, we've already downloaded that Ubuntu, so I'm just gonna run Ubuntu mainline. So let's do that, and we'll hit that. Uh, this gives just a basic syntax of it. So we can do a listing to see what's already installed. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just go dash list. And it'll say, hey, 5.6.4 is installed. Now the official one on my Ubuntu version here, I think is 5.4. So I've actually already installed this kernel, but let's see if there's an update for it. So uh, let's do a dash C to check to see if there's another update. Finding latest version from uh, Ubuntu. It says, hey, there is one. Right now there's a 5.6.7 is available. So it actually shows you exactly what you need to do. You do a dash I for install pretty intuitive. All right, let's do sudo and the install. Let's let's see what it grabs now. Go ahead and hit yes. All right, and uh, installing those packages now with the sudo command going. All right, and then it looks like it installed the four packages. Um, let's go ahead, do a listing and see if it already picked them up. Probably, oh, no, nope, there it is. It already picked them up. Um, and I think we can just go a sudo reboot and see if we can't select this kernel on startup. All right, we're back in and we'll run a uname just to see what kernel we have. Come on over to all right here. We'll just go uname sr. And look at that, it already went ahead and installed it and everything, I didn't need to update grub, I didn't have to do anything other than just run that one command, dash i to install it, and that's it. So, I mean, that's pretty darn powerful. Uh, it still has the old kernel there, so if something did happen, I could revert back. 
uh, using Grub Customizer. I made a video on Grub Customizer. I'll link it above uh, so you can actually tweak uh, in a graphic user interface without being in terminal and switch those things around. But let's get over to Debian machines. What happens if you're not running an Ubuntu derivative and you can't use that open source project? Well, it gets even better, you know? <laughs> uh, let's go ahead, jump into that. I'm gonna pull up my browser. So this is something I've actually made a video in the past on. It's a custom kernel meant for desktop and gaming users. And that's really what uh, a lot of people need. So in this instance, I would recommend actually running this kernel. Now, if you're a Debian user, I say this kernel every time. The mainline kernels for Debian are really geared towards servers and you usually have really crappy gaming performance. That's why a lot of people are like, well, I need to use Ubuntu. It has better tweaks compared to Debian. And that's true from a kernel level, but honestly, this kernel even outperforms the Ubuntu kernel. So I use this on pretty much every desktop that I have a Debian, a vanilla Debian install, or let's say I have Linux Mint LMDE, the Debian edition. I'll do this. So the install is very simple. You can actually just copy this entire thing. So you would just basically take this entire line and paste it in. I actually did this on a live stream uh, just this week and just kind of showcased it. Someone came into the channel asking about a driver that I was, wasn't working and I went ahead and just did this live for them, copy and pasted this in. It goes ahead and adds everything you need. And then you just literally have an up-to-date, not only just an up-to-date kernel that has all the latest drivers, but it's also tuned for desktop and gaming usage, which is just awesome. Uh, this one, I'm obviously not gonna install. I could install the Ubuntu thing, but again, it's, it's simple. Hey, go ahead, add these. This adds the repository, so you'd paste this in, um, and then come down here, and then just copy-paste this line to install the latest Linux images. And then this will just auto update as soon as you update your system. Fantastic way of getting the latest and greatest drivers and also having like tuning performance for gaming and those types of things, actual desktop usage because Linux at its heart's really meant for a server and having packages like this really help bring it to that next level. And uh, I'll go ahead and cut over and kind of give you a couple warnings here uh, as some people are worried about doing kernel updates and I wanna go ahead and put your mind at ease. So when it comes to actually uh, installing these kernels, do you need to worry about messing up your system? And the short answer is not really. Most times, I don't think I've ever had a bad kernel install using uh, the custom gaming kernel or using the mainline kernel on the latest and greatest. The Linux team does a fantastic job. There's a reason why, you know, Linus Torvalds is like considered a god in the Linux community because that kernel and that team that revolves around the Linux kernel is just amazing. And uh, I have yet to run into a bad Linux kernel on my system. That said, I always recommend having two kernels at the same time. Where some people get in trouble is installing the latest kernel and then uninstalling the old one. Don't do that, just leave it there. And if you install, I think, three kernels, usually it'll go ahead and flush out uh, the fourth kernel that sits there. It only usually allows a couple before it starts flushing kernels. And those are fine to get rid of the old, old kernels, but always leave a couple kernels on there because sometimes, like I have a AMD 2700, when that first came out and the new kernels arrived, I did have some issues where I was using an LTS release or an older kernel for a little while. But uh, that's all I gotta say. That's the only warning I have for you is leave the old one in just in case. You just never know. Um, but for the most part, I rarely ever have any issues with the new ones. And when I do have issues with the new ones, it's more of an annoyance uh, than an actual issue. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.